Welcome to the Mortgage Wise Radio Show and Video Podcast, where we educate and provide expert advice on personal finance, mortgages, and real estate investing. Show me the money. As a result of what we do, our team has helped hundreds of first time buyers, experienced buyers, and real estate investors achieve their goals of home ownership. I wonder if there's a connection there. Here are your executive producers and mortgage advisors, Randy and Veronica Chambliss. What up, what up, what up, what up? Uh, I'm super excited to have you guys on. I want to make sure you guys can hear me okay. So let me get back to Zoom. All right. Jay, can you hear me okay? You guys can hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly, big brother. All right. Awesome, awesome. So listen, guys, I'm Randy Chamblin, the executive, the executive director of Louisiana Housing Authority, and also a corporate branch manager with Geneva Financial. And uh, I have to my right. I'm Veronica Chambliss. I'm also, well, I'm the director of housing at Louisiana Housing uh, Authority. And I'm also a co-branch manager with Geneva Financial. And today, guys, uh, this week, we are interviewing the founder of Infinity Title Company, LLC, Mr. Jay Daniels. He will share what a title settlement company does, and he'll reveal three critical title services his team provides buyers that give them a peace of mind knowing that a seller has the right to sell the property. Infinity Title LLC is a full-service real estate title company licensed and staffed to handle all aspects of real estate transactions throughout all of Louisiana. Principal services include title abstracting, title examinations, attorney title opinions, defective title curative work, title insurance, notary, notary public services, escrow settlement and closing services. So Jay is a 2008 graduate of Tulane University Law School. Jay has handled thousands of cases in the areas of criminal justice, personal injury, family law and estate planning. Welcome Jay. Welcome sir. Good, after, good evening, rather. It is a pleasure to uh, be with you both and your audience. Uh, I certainly appreciate you guys having me on this evening. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure to have yeah. you. Absolutely. I mean, we just excited because, you know, it's a lot that goes on with title research and title. And if you don't have the proper skillful uh, title company to work with, then it's going to be a challenge and some things could turn out bad in the future. So this was a hot topic. We definitely wanted to bring an expert on to be able to share with the audience. I appreciate that. I don't know if I'm going to dub myself uh, uh, an expert, but I will tell you this, right? I take pride in well, doing it the right way. Uh, so uh, if, if, if that makes me an expert, I'll take it, right? Uh, because as you right. two know, and I, and I work together, um, you know, we're going to do it until we get it right. Uh, and, and right. make sure that uh, that that we get things done in the proper fashion for our clients. Yes, yeah, sir. Absolutely. I remember we was going through, well, we was growing through G-R-O-W-I-N-G, growing through a challenge on one of the files. And uh, you had sent me a text. You said, man, this is my motto. I go by. And that, that text was just get it done, right? That's right. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And, and hey, we got it done, didn't we? Yeah. So we did. We got it done. <laughs> And so listen, having said that, um, I think before we really get into the content and the meat and potatoes, uh, we would like to learn a little bit more about Jay. We, Veronica obviously uh, read some highlights, uh, but we want to know a little bit about your background in regards to what some maybe some challenges uh, or the journey, I should say, that you took to get in the place that you are today. So I will, you know, I, I always uh, like to sort of start, start the story uh in terms of where i'm from right i am a i'm, I'm a native native of this area i'm a west bank kid uh born uh and, and raised uh primarily in harvey moved out to algiers for high school uh, i'm a, a a proud edna car cougar uh if okay. you folks know car cougars we are, are proud of that uh, i did my uh, my undergraduate studies at uh, howard university uh, out in washington dc uh, and, and as Ms. V indicated, I came home and uh, went to law school at Tulane, right? That is uh, sort of 
sort of my educational uh, background. I am a, 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 a proud husband of a, of a loving and beautiful wife. And I have two, uh, two beautiful kids, a 10 year old daughter and a, and a recently turned four year old son. His birthday was last Wednesday. So he is, um, he, 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 you know, he's sort of on deck here uh, around <laughs> our house. Um, Absolutely. The perfect but, match. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't hear you. That's the perfect match, a little boy and a little girl. Yeah, yeah. Right. Two, two, two and I'm through. Two and I'm through. <laughs> <You're> through. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, you better not hang around us too long. <laughs> no, no, listen. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> hey, we have the retirement plan going on right now. They're the retirement plan. We take care of you now, you take care of us That's later. Right. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> Absolutely. So we appreciate you from sharing that story, uh, Jay. So, you know, today, you know, the topic, you know, was that you was going to come on and, and share three critical um, title services that people need to know about um, and have a, a degree of understanding when they purchase in a home. Um, so we'll just dive right on to it, if that's okay. W what is those three items in, that you will share with the audience? So, so I think it's important for um, particularly folks who aren't uh, familiar with the process to um, to, to, to sort of have an appreciation uh, for how uh, title companies fit into real estate transactions, right? I, I like to describe it uh, in, in terms of essentially being um, the middle man, if, if you will, uh, to the transaction. We're sort of the go-between uh, between the lenders, uh, the buyers, uh, and the sellers, right? Uh, be, because we are, are, are sort of centrally placed uh, we are in the position to, to be able to uh, facilitate not just communication, but but, but generally all uh, most aspects, I should say, of of a real estate transaction. Uh, in terms of the, um, the the key services that we provide, uh, I, I, I would sort of say at the outset, um, when you think title company, you think about a, an abstract and title search, right? That is a uh, a key function of what title companies do, uh, and, and and the reason why it is, you know, it 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 is key and, and sort of central is, you know, when you as a buyer uh, enter into a contract with someone, uh, you assume right that this person uh, is the owner of the property uh, and that they have the authority to sell that property, um, and unfortunately, sometimes uh, though that assumption can be misplaced, uh, so you would. Um, you know, engage the services of a title company to ensure, uh, one, that the person who you are contracted with to sell the property uh, has the authority to sell it, and they're, and they're the owners of the property. Uh, and, um, you know, sort of from there, we would um, examine uh, the chain of title, right, meaning the sequence of owners uh, of the property uh, to determine that prior uh, acts uh, were uh, legally uh, 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 they aren't defective anyway, maybe I should describe it that way. Uh, and then we will also examine uh, the record associated with both uh, the, um, the property and the sellers uh, of the property to ensure that there aren't liens or, or judgments uh, that might come back and impact your uh, clear uh, title and, and ownership to the property. Uh, so that's sort of what, what title companies uh, are known for, but I think that um, just as important uh, a role that title companies have to play is to ensure that um, you know that 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 all parties uh, are comfortable with how things are, are progressing throughout the transaction. Um, you know, we you know we sort of once we get a title request uh, the expectation sometimes is that you won't hear from the title company again until you get to the closing table. Right, and sometimes right. it, it happens that way. Uh, but one of the things uh, we, we make sure that we do is we let buyers, sellers, and agents know, hey, look, if you've got a question about anything during uh, the course of your transaction, give us a shout, right? If we can't answer the question, we'll find an answer to the question. I'll put you uh, in touch with the appropriate person uh, that's a part of the transaction to get it, right? So that sort of communication hub is, is something that, um, that, that, that's central to the role of a, of a title company. Uh, and 
I would say finally sort of um, just what a, you know, what a, what a money sort of, sort of gets involved that uh, title companies offer uh, title insurance, right? Uh, any buyer uh, who is um, uh, financing a transaction, their lender is going to require them to purchase lender's title insurance. That is a, a condition of 99.9% uh, of all loans. And the only reason why I won't say 100% of loans is because, you, you know, so there may be some lender out there who, who does something differently. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, uh, in, in order to issue uh, title insurance, right, it sort of um, goes back to the... Um, examination of title uh, and the, the, the abstract, uh, a title insurance company or a title attorney uh, in, the, in the case of myself, we have to be uh, comfortable enough with what we find in the, the title chain uh, to be willing to, uh, you know, stake, um, you know, our opinion uh, that this property is insurable, right? And if there's an issue, uh, the reason why the lender gets title insurance uh, is because if there's an issue with the title that might negatively affect uh, their interest in the property, right? They wanna, they wanna be able to say, hey, this attorney uh, told us we were gonna be good. And if, if, if we're not good, uh, we need to see you and your insurer, Mr. Attorney. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that sort of piggy, you know, sort of segues into uh, owner's title insurance, right? Uh, when, when you talk about owner's title insurance with lenders, um, they, uh, they always couch it in terms of, of it being optional. And it is, right? It is not it's optional in the sense that it's not a condition of your loan most of the time. Uh, but it, if you are a person who's interested in, in purchasing a property, uh, this is your investment. This is your baby. Uh, so you should want to protect your interest in title just as much as the lender wants to protect the money that they're lending. Uh, so, um, you know, I... I chuckle sometimes when, you know, when, when buyers tell me, hey, well, it's optional. And, and you're right, it's absolutely uh, optional. Uh, but uh, at, at the point where you are expending uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars or tens right. of thousands of dollars, uh, you should do all that you can to, uh, to protect your interest in that. Absolutely. Right. And if I can kind of add to that, Jay, um, we had a personal experience on our house. So once we closed on our house, they, they had somebody maybe a couple of months later knocked on our door from road home. So he wanted to know, was that person still the owner of this house? So I told him, no, we actually purchased this house and I gave him the date. He said, well, he gave me his card. Well, can you send a, a copy of your, um, your sale to me so that we can, we know that this house has changed ownership. I didn't have a worry in the world. First of all, I felt like, hey, I don't know this guy. I'm not sending you my information. I just closed my door. I didn't send him anything. You know why? Because I had owners and lenders title insurance. So I was comfortable. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. And then on top of that, it's kind of like flood insurance. You know, we have, uh, you know, a lot of people in that may be in, may not be in a flood zone. And the flood insurance policy may be very, very affordable. But does that mean, since it's not optional, uh, since it is optional from the lender that you can either pick it up or not, should you not pick it up? And, you know, the answer is, yes, you should, you know, because like you mentioned, you're spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on that property. And even though it's not in a flood zone and lender does not require it to be escrowed, you still should be wise enough to pick up that flood policy just in case something happened. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of is the same thing with that lender's, that lender's policy and that owner's policy. And Randy, you make a you you make a good point with the uh, correlation between flood insurance, right, and flood zones. Like anybody who's uh, you know who's in the market to buy a house, they're probably uh, inundated with um, you know with insurance information or you know particularly flood insurance in this area, right? We're in South Louisiana. If too many of us go outside. Uh, and, and run around too long, the sweat might cause us to fall, yeah. right? So, All right. <laughs> um, you, it's always a good idea to protect yourself, but you know, the, the, the key point to it is, right? If you 
owner's title insurance, uh, all things considered as a part of a real estate transaction is very, very, very inexpensive, right? Uh, it is it, it is worth it to you to pay a one time fee of a few hundred dollars uh, to you know to be able to rest easy, uh, knowing that um, your interest in the property in terms of the uh, the, the clear title uh, is protected just as well as uh, the, the the lender's interest. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, and that's kind of bring me to a story of a transaction we did recently. Uh, with you when you know everything was going smooth we negotiated the price really well you know everything was just awesome then all of a sudden we had a snag in the title where the owner um, did not uh, sign the documents in front of the proper notary had the proper witnesses um, so you know if you if you can share just a little bit of what you had found on that title without going too much details but share a little bit of what you saw and why that was a red flag for you so one of the so one of the things that um, that as a as a reviewing attorney uh, I always ensure uh, and, and what any title attorney uh, should always ensure is that the ex the the documents that purport to uh, transfer ownership are uh, uh, properly executed uh, in that they meet uh, legal strictures right um, and in the the specific uh, instance that you're referencing. Um, uh, Randy, the the instrument was executed uh, before a notary, uh, but it was only one witness, right? right. Uh, and if you are going to uh, execute an instrument in authentic form in the state of Louisiana, it has to be before a notary and two witnesses, right? So that you know that was a potential uh, title, not a potential, but that was a, a a title defect that that we needed to make sure that we could uh, we could take care of. Uh, we had a uh, you know, we had to track down the original owner from a sale uh, that was nearly 20 years old. Uh, fortunately, we were able to, uh, you know, to get a hold of that owner. Uh, and, and after some massaging, we were able to get things into a position where she si uh, signed what she needed to sign. And, and we were able to get that deal done. Right. Absolutely. And it just goes back to just being creative enough to find that owner, because after 20 years, you know, she could be or that owner could be anywhere. Or deceased. Or even deceased. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was a blessing, yeah. blessing that she was not deceased. Right. And you guys had a platform, uh, a system in place that you can't track her down and be able to move forward. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we appreciate you again for that because that was a personal deal for us. So thank right. you. No, no. That Listen, I, like like I told you, man, we, we've got to get it done, right? Like, you know, I... It, it you know it took us a couple extra weeks to do it uh, longer than, than than I think any everybody wanted it uh, to but at the end of the day um, you know again it, it, it is about making sure that uh, that we do a good job for the folks who who have come to us to trust us to say hey Jay look we want you to take care of, of this transaction um, and you know I, I I don't take that responsibility lightly um, you know mm -hmm. I, I won't um, we, you know, we won't rest until we make sure that every, uh, you know, I is dotted and T is crossed. That's right. Absolutely. And that just gave us a peace of mind, you know, knowing that, okay, that transaction was done properly and we have that owner's title insurance. That gives you a peace of mind. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. Definitely. So having said that, we went over the title abstract. That was number one, because the, the topic is, guys, if you're just joining us, the topic is, uh, Jay was revealing the three most important uh, title services that his team provide to make sure that that owner who's claiming to be the owner of the house that's selling you that house is actually the owner and they're legally able to sell that property to you. So he went over and explained in great detail title abstract, number one, number two, title review, and number three, title insurance. So Jay, if you don't mind, let's throw a bonus in there, if you will, right? And let's talk a little bit about property recording, you know, when you're recording the documents, so all these documents that someone might sign, uh, the deed of trust or the mortgage, uh, the, uh, you know, all the documents that goes along, like, why is it so important to record that property? So the, I guess the biggest, you know, uh, reason why making sure that everything is, um, is recorded properly is because uh, legally, right, legally, the act of recording an instrument puts third parties on notice, right? Uh, registering a, 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 you know, so sometimes we we, we see 
uh, uh, we get a uh, uh, we get files where their uh, acts of donations are a quick claim deeds that were executed between parties but never recorded right so someone will show up and um and say hey look i you know i, I this property was donated to me by my my grandmother uh back in 2002 um i have the paperwork here uh so we you know we get to work on the file and we see that the property still in grandmother's name right uh, we see the property still in in, in another party's name and well, that hadn't been recorded, right? So that means that if if your interest is not recognized by, um, you know, the city of New Orleans, state of Louisiana, as the owner of the property, um, you know, you have been holding on to an instrument for twenty years um, that um, that is that should rightfully be recorded in order to uh, establish your your claim of ownership, uh, and. Um, you know, just because you do the thing, right, doesn't necessarily mean uh, you have become the thing or you own the thing, right? Once you uh, uh, put the world or put third parties on notice, that is sort of, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, stamping uh, the the official as, uh, excuse me, the action as as official. Uh, so you know that part of that part of it is important and. and uh, most places, right? You can just take an instrument to the recording office, have it be recorded, uh, and, and, and that's that. Uh, New Orleans, um, Orleans Parish, as as we often do around here, uh, there could be some extra hoops that you have to jump through to get certain <laughs> things done. But um, you know, we we've we we we've taken great care, um, you know, over the last couple of years here to, to cu cultivate relationships down with people at the recording office to make sure that. Um, you know, we are uh, we are in a in a position to make sure that our, our clients are the folks that we're serving. Um, you know, all, all every all, all of their expectations are met, uh, both uh, in terms of personal expectations and expectations under the law. Right. Okay. Good. Gotcha. And Jay, I have a, a quick bonus. Um, oh. I had two two people this week ask me, uh, Miss Veronica, well, when do or when do I or how do I file for my homestead exemption. Can you briefly tell us what that Good is question. and how to file for it? So homestead exemption, uh, the, in the Louisiana uh, constitution, um, it is written that the first $75,000 of the value of your home, right? The place that you make your homestead uh, is exempted uh, from property taxes. Uh, so one, it's important because it is a, a cost saving mechanism, right? It is a way for you to cut sometimes thousands of dollars off of your tax bill, uh, depending on, um, you know, uh, the, the value of your home. Uh, and, and, and depending on the value of your home, you may uh, be in a position where you're paying no property taxes at all. Right. Um, so that is, uh, that is sort of a benefit uh, to the citizens of the state of Louisiana for uh for establishing and living uh, here within the state. Uh, to, to apply for a homestead exemption, the rules are, are fairly standard across all of the parishes here in the metro area. Uh, you, need a, you need a few things, right? The first um, thing that you will need um, is uh, an instrument to uh, establish that you in fact own the property, right? Uh, so most often that is in the form of a, of a cash sale. Once you buy the property, uh, you will get a copy of the cash sale, um, both recorded and un unrecorded typically. Uh, and what the, um, uh, so maybe I should should back up one step in, in, in sort of as a threshold matter, right? Each parish in the state of Louisiana ha has an assessor's office, mm -hmm. right? The assessor's office is the, is the, or the elected assessor is the person or entity that's responsible for establishing property values in a given property in a given parish mm -hmm. uh, and so what uh, what you would do is go to that assessor's office you'd bring that cash sale that we talked about um, you'd also have to show uh, a Louisiana ID or driver's license both in your name and the property address uh, that's associated with that cash sale uh, and then finally uh, most uh, parishes require that you present an unpaid utility bill, both in your name and that property address. 
Uh, and so in, in terms of timing, right, most often you won't be able to apply for that homestead exemption until you get that first bill. Right. Uh, so when so when you you know when you when, when you're closing with us, uh, what we tell you generally uh, is that uh, you know within uh, 45 days uh, after you get that first bill is when you should uh, you should apply for it. And you should do it while it's fresh on your mind, uh, right. because the right. last thing you want to uh, do is at the end of the year or uh, in Orleans Parish in January when taxes are due, uh, typically. Um, you don't, you know, you don't want to look at that tax bill and say, hey, that number's way larger than I expected. Oh, I forgot right. to apply for my homestead. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I always tell folks who are, who are closing with us, look, get it done within the first two months. That way uh, you don't have to worry about it, right? That homestead is not something you have to apply for every year. Uh, once you do it that first year, uh, it, it is in place until you uh, move or voluntarily give up the homestead. Yeah. And that's important too, um, well, dealing with the mortgage, because the lender in most cases, if it's your primary home, the lender qualified you based on the homestead exemption. Now, there are some lenders that don't do that. However, if your lender did qualify you, or approve you for that mortgage based on the homestead exemption, you want to go within the first one or two months to apply for your homestead exemption, because if not, when your lender get a copy of that tax bill, they're going to review that and they're going to adjust your escrows. So that, that means your mortgage payment will increase, right? That, that's that's absolutely correct. And look, there's not there's not a lender who we work with that does not require uh, a tax estimate and tax certification. One certifying that all prior taxes have been paid, or if they hadn't been paid, uh, to ensuring that uh, you know that we have something in place to collect and pay those, uh, make those payments upon settlement. And two, right? Uh, what's you know what what are we going to escrow, right? What are what are what are the escrow tax amounts that that we should anticipate our buyer um, paying, right? And 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 oftentimes we'll sort of provide that in the form of both with and without a homestead exemption. Uh, but again, you know you if. If it's not a circumstance in which this is a rental property or some sort of investment property, if you're gonna live in the property, you need you, you need to avail yourself with a homestead exemption. You just have to do it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because just to piggyback off of what Veronica was mentioned, you know, when you have that escrow that's set up, and you know that escrow, you know, I'm not talking to you directly, Jay. I know you know this, but talking to the audience, the escrow consists of your flood insurance. If it's in a flood zone, it's gonna consist of your homeowner's insurance and your taxes. And so if your taxes is, you know, $4,000 a year and you take that and divide that by 12, now that's going to your monthly mortgage payment because that's part of your escrow. But if you have that homestead exemption, you might go from 4,000, you might go down to $1,500, right? Just using that as an example. And we take that $1,500 and divide that by 12. And now that makes your mortgage payment cheaper or let lower because your escrow is a lower. So you definitely want to make sure um, that you have that homestead exemption in place. And uh, one good thing, what I was writing down is exact documents those individuals need. Because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we prepare now, but I know you do it on your end. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I say, we just reiterated, you know, saying, listen, make sure you have that ID, you know, change the address to your new address that you just purchased, your utility bill. And then also making sure you're applying in the first two months of the first right. of getting that um, mm -hmm. first bill. And, and look, one of the other reasons why you you know why you should do it, right? You almost have to do it is because it's not you know it's not like they stay hiding it from you, right? You can go to every, <laughs> yeah, right. every every assessor's office uh, in the state of Louisiana, even the even the backwoods, poor dunk towns, all have uh, assessor's website, right, with, with a link that will tell you what you need to do to apply for a homestead exemption. Uh, you know, as a, you know, we, when we, when we close files here, uh, one of the things we do is make sure that when, you know, when we send folks away with the folder, that homestead exemption is in there, uh, that, excuse me, that homestead exemption information is in there, uh, because again, um, you know, it, it, it's important and it'll save you money. Yeah, yep, absolutely. So listen, we finished with those questions. One, we appreciate you for answering those and we're going to move to the next section, right? And so this is going to be some questions for you in regards to uh, Jay, right? Personally, right? So the first question for you, Jay, is if you can go back in time 
and coach the young Jay, what's one thing you will share with him that will help him to build his business? Um, so one of the, you know, one of the things that, that, that I, I wish I had known, uh, or that I wish, uh, someone had told me, uh, back when I first started my practice, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to, to marry yourself, uh, to the first thing that you're good at. Um, you know, I, I started my, um, I started my practice uh, out uh, as a criminal defense attorney, as a public defender, and I love the work. I still do the work. Um, you know, one of the uh, one of the highlights of both my career and in life is, you know, is, is being able to to stand up for folks who can't stand for themselves. Um, but in 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 doing that, right? I, um, like I, I've had friends for years who have told me, Jay, you, you probably should consider doing title work, right? Uh, because I, I've always been interested in it. Uh, you know, I, I've always reviewed uh, contracts for folks who are in, in real estate. Uh, but my, um, you know, it was it was just I, I, I did not have the foresight at the time to, you know, to realize that, um, you know, I, I, I should be a little bit more flexible in, in, in how I was maneuvering early uh, in, in my practice uh, that 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 would probably be my biggest piece of advice look always you can stay on your on your main road here uh, but I'll always uh, keep an open mind to you know to to, to new exit and and, and on ramps so absolutely yeah. I love it man I love it thank you for sharing that uh, the next question number two why is home ownership important I heard you guys uh, talk a couple, and we've had this conversation sort of, um, you know, off off your your platform here about uh, the importance of, um, you know, black home ownership in particular, uh, and, and how it is. Uh, um, I don't want to say an easy, but it is a it is a surefire way uh, to be able to create wealth. Uh, 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 to have access to resources. And one of the, um, you know, one of the things I always say about, about my, my, my criminal uh, defense practice was, you know, 95% of the people uh, who I represented look just like, you know, the three of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in doing that work, um, there's a, a couple common themes, right? Uh, lack of education, uh, lack of resources. Uh, and, you know, um, oftentimes, right, um, you are, you know, home ownership, uh, particularly for working class folks, right, is the, the chief driver of their wealth, right, or the chief uh, uh, driver of, of their ability to have access to resources. Uh, and so I, I think that's imperative. I think it's, it's important uh, for you know, for folks to own the ground uh, that they that they live on. Uh, I, I think that's a, a lesson. Like I come from a single mother. My mother uh, worked all of her life, and she 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 she's never owned a she's never owned a house. Uh, she she worked you know 50 years, uh, uh, you know, providing rent to to to, to other people. Uh, and you know, once once I, I was sort of cognizant of that, right? One of, one of my goals was, you know, look, I'm gonna own my own crib. I'm gonna own my own house, no matter what it takes me. Right. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And that is extremely important. I mean, you know, just for example, right now we in this seller's market, the inventory is super low in, in the New Orleans area. So, you know, now will be, you know, great time if somebody had acquired properties years ago, um, they may have very uh, low, Debt on it, if any of that, and they might consider, you know what, let me put this house on the market and sell it, um, sell this asset and create a capital gain um, that could possibly pay off their personal home that they're living in and pay off their car notes and pay off their student loans um, because they have so much equity that's built in at home and they could be totally debt free. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're absolutely right, you know, home ownership, um, having that understanding that that's an asset, it may not even be, a, a, you know, a big, big chunk of equity in the house right now, but what it looks like 10 years down the road, or uh, what it looks like when your mm -hmm. children could live in their home uh, without having to pay a mortgage because your rent renters over those years paid it off and now your mm -hmm. children have a home debt-free. So, you know, it's important. 
Yeah. So like the saying is, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate <laughs> and then wait. Yes. Yeah. I love it. So that brings us to the third question, G. What advice would you give buyers who may be interested in buying a home today? So one of the things that, you know, that, that I have, um, that, that and I've been telling folks lately is make sure you surround yourself with good people. Uh, I haven't, you know, um, particularly, you know, for, for some of the reasons that you guys have identified with the, the current state of the market, right? It, you know, the, the idea that, um, you know, that, that, that you're going to go it alone uh, without a, a good agent, uh, without a lender that you can trust, without a, a, a title company that you can trust. Uh, it just doesn't, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't think that makes, um, that's in a, a buyer's best interest right now. Uh, so, you know, my, my greatest piece of advice is find you a, you know, find you a realtor who you can trust, find you a realtor who believes uh, in the same sort of things that you believe in, who have, uh, who has your best interest at, at heart, right? You don't necessarily have to go go with the first person that you meet uh, because that isn't necessarily uh, gonna always be the uh, the right thing uh, for you. Uh, just like you shop for everything else, shop around. Find 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 a shop for a realtor who's a fit for you. Shop for a lender who's a fit for you, right? Uh, and then then come over over to Infinity and see us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> straight up oh, yeah, plugging it. <laughs> Hey, I, I appreciate that, man. That, that was awesome. And, you know, having said that, um, we're going to move to the next section as we start to wrap up. And that is the quote of the week, right? And so every episode that we do, we always like to leave off with a quote because, you know, I've learned in life that hope gives you power today, right? Um, and so that quote of this week is, what entertains you, trains you, right? I'm going to say that again. Whatever entertains you, trains you. So if you want to accomplish a goal or desire, something that you wish that you want to accomplish, um, then you have to, one, choose it, right? Number two, you have to go obtain some knowledge of it. And three, you have to get an understanding of that knowledge, right? And so now you want to focus on that. So if you're watching TV all day, you're watching, um, you know, foolishness all day long, then that foolishness is training you. And if you allow your children to watch that craziness that's going on, that's going to train them as well. So you want to monitor and be conscious of what you're thinking about. You want to be conscious of what you're allowing your eyesight, your ears to listen and see, because eventually that will train you and create this new belief or this new paradigm. And so we wanted to leave that with you guys today. So Jay, the last question for you, my brother, how can someone get in touch with Mr. Jay Daniels? Okay, uh, so we, uh, uh, you know, we've got website, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we are at www.infinitynola.com. That's www.infinity, not like the car, but the word infinity, N-O-L-A.com. Uh, infinity underscore Nola uh, at both uh, Instagram and Facebook. And uh, obviously, we can always be reached here at the office at 504-324-8232. All right. All awesome. Right. Awesome. So, guys, you can reach me and you can connect with me on Facebook and on Instagram at Mr. Randy Chambliss. Uh, my direct number is 504-270-2783. And also, you can visit us online or visit me online, rather, at randyknowsmortgages.com. Again, randyknowsmortgages.com. And I can be reached at um, Facebook and Instagram, Veronica Chambliss. My direct phone number is 504-715-4388. And I'm also online at vknowsmortgages.com. Awesome, awesome. And listen, guys, Veronica and I, we mentioned at the very beginning, you know, we both lenders. Uh, we have a mortgage branch. We're growing it. We're looking to uh, hire more and more loan officers and branch managers across the country. Uh, but one of the things that we strive on is have a no-fee guarantee, right? We provide free consultation, so we don't charge anything to consult with you. We don't charge you for our application. We don't charge you to pull your credit, right? We just simply want to have that conversation, ask some questions to find out how can we serve you best. If you're ready to move forward, then we're going to certainly move forward to the next milestone of your home buying process of getting pre-approved. Or if you're not quite ready yet, we're going to give you an exact 
practical plan to follow so you can be ready in the next uh, or near future. So having said that, guys, thank you for tuning in. Make sure that you comment, like, and share this. And we guys will see you at, on the next episode. Thank you. to the Mortgage Wise radio show and video podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to share it with a friend and subscribe. Please follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook at the Mortgage Wise radio show. If you want to learn more about what we talked about today, give us a call at 504-270-2783. Or to view our podcast library, please visit our website, themortgagewiseradioshow.com. Until next time, choose to have a great day on purchase, mortgage wise friends. Go home. All right, guys. Take care. Have a great day on purpose. <laughs> Y'all be good. Have a great night, guys. All right, All right Dave. Enjoy your day, my friend.